Hi everyone, thank you for joining us for the 2020 Vail Dance Festival Digital Edition. My name is Michael Breeden. And I'm Rebecca King Ferraro, and we are former Miami City Ballet dancers and the hosts of the podcast Conversations on Dance. We are thrilled to be back at the festival for our fourth year to help bring audiences an inside look behind the scenes at the dancers they love. Today we are joined by American Ballet Theatre principals James Whiteside and Isabella Boylston, who are also two Vail favorites and uh, favorites of our podcast as well. So we're very glad to have them back on with us. Thank you guys for joining us. We're so happy that uh, both of you could come. We have wanted this for a long time and I'm sure that everyone uh, who follows Vail Dance Festival will be really eager to um, see both of you together again, even if it's just digitally. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having us. We're so happy to be here. Yeah. That's the enthusiasm we like to hear, James. Yes. <laughs> Come on, amp it up. All right. Um, so that was, that was really loud. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really far away from the computer. So we, everyone knows the two of you are besties and we love seeing you at the festival. We love seeing you on Instagram. We love seeing you all over together, but maybe not everyone knows the origin of your friendship and the Cindy's. So tell us maybe how you guys first became uh, good friends and how you started to dub yourselves the Cindy's. I think we should start with, with when you thought I was auditioning for ABT. This is so good. Wait, I don't think I can tell that story because it makes me seem really mean. <laughs> well, then can you just like soften it a little bit? Revision is history it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, basically I heard that James was joining mm -hmm. and I was a little wary because it was a time in ABT when they were importing a ton of guest artists mm -hmm. and so I was a little bit I think the sen general sentiment in the company was like why not push the homegrown talent and um you know work with the amazing breadth of talent that we have in the company rather than bringing in guest artists I was a little like irked when I heard they were hiring James as a soloist <laughs> <laughs> And I also thought he was like a completely different person. Um, but then when I saw him taking class the first day we took class together, I was like, oh my God, who is that? He's so fierce. And um, it was Cindy and he was, I remember the combination. It was a petite allegro, a nimble biscuit. <laughs> and of course he was slaying it. <laughs> and that's basically um, when I first met him. And, you know, I couldn't help but respect the, the nimble biscuit chops that he was <laughs> displaying. Yeah, she, um, I mean, at the risk of saying anything rude, um, <laughs> she thought I was a different auditioner and was confused at the hire. Oh. Um, so, but when, when I did join, I was in the, the classes they do before the season starts. Mm -hmm. so it's like a week of maintenance classes. And I didn't know who she was. And in retrospect, I remember actually Raymond Lukens, who has been sort of like, you know, watching over me as an angel in my career and like calling me and being like, go to ABT, you know, stuff like that. Um, <laughs> being like, this queen is everything. And I didn't know who she was. I'd never seen her. But then in class, I didn't know her name or anything, but I just saw her being a monster. And, uh, <laughs> And I, I went up to her and I was like, wait a minute, you're like amazing. And she was like, wait a minute, you're like amazing. And then we were friends. Uh -huh. Oh my it. God, it's such a gross like center stage story. It yeah. truly is. When you're like a parody of everything. Mm. <laughs> um, but anyway, shortly thereafter, we uh, got to do Don Q oh. together. So it was my debut as Keytree in Don Q and my partner got injured. And so James did Basilio, also his first principal role with mm -hmm. ABT. And we were performing in Barcelona, which was magical. I bet. Um, and so that just like cemented the friendship. Yeah, mm -hmm. isn't it ironic that my first principal role with ABT was something so masky jasky as Basilio? <laughs> I love that. And but in Spain, no less, like, like Idaho and Connecticut coming through with the same yeah. <laughs> Such a joke. Oh uh, my God. Yeah, but we you, had so much fun. We had so much fun. Was you it? really, yeah, you really butched it up. <laughs> right. Was that like kind of unexpected at the time? Because James, I know you were partnering a lot of the taller ballerinas and that was a big um, boost for your career at ABT. It was like they really needed a solid partner for a number of ballerinas that 
you know, a tall men that can lift a tall lady is like, that's a really important, but sort of rare beast. So you were kind of fitting that and Bella, you were a little smaller and you can go with a lot of different partners. So was that a surprise that like you got the, the, the prize tall, ma- tall lady partner for that? <laughs> I think it wasn't so much about anything except the need to fill a spot. Right. And so much of my first year at ABT wasn't really based on any skills that I had. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I had already been cast to do it with Paloma Herrera. Mm-hmm. So I was not supposed to do Don Q that first like month at ABT. Right. I was supposed to show up and do like drink to me with thine eyes or whatever, some Mark Morris dance. And then literally like 99% of ABT was injured. Uh-huh. And they were like, here? <laughs> and then like a couple days later, they were like, now you have two partners. <laughs> and so I did the two shows uh, like like two days apart. Mm-hmm. One, and I met Paloma for the first time in Spain in our first rehearsal like two days before the show. Great. Yeah. So, so I'm assuming humble under such circumstances, they're usually like, okay, can you work? You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm assuming this was a, a role you had danced in Boston before. Very poorly, yes. Okay. <laughs> um, so... poorly. I did the Nuria <laughs> version and I was capital bad. So but the Nuria version is pretty much it's very different, right? I mean, yeah. so it's like, it wasn't just like, oh, it's in my body and I can like, sure, they're throwing me some curveballs, but like, I can do this. It was like, you gotta relearn it. You know, it's, it, when I tell you like, compared to the Nuria version, the like, the standard Don Q is, it's like candy. Yeah. You're literally just like, nom, 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 like eating spaghetti and like marshmallows. Right. <laughs> I mean, Nuria, I don't know where he got these ideas, but have you ever had like the Nutcracker? It just starts with like a four minute balance and arabesque with the sugar plum and the calf next to one another. I mean, I don't even want to see what happens in Don Q, frankly. Oh my God, I would love to start a pot of with a four minute balance. I'd be like, yes, I'm resting. (laughs) 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 Right, like if you've seen my point shoes, my box is literally like this big. So, you, you darn those uh, shoes. I don't. I don't. Um, I don't darn them. But for some reason, balancing is like fun to me. But uh-huh. there are many other steps that I find much less fun that probably other people <laughs> think are easy. So, Let's- you guys had this first um, performance where you were thrust together. But when did? Um, as your friendship continued to grow, when did the name Cindy's start to come around and what was the origin of that? I mean, I think it was pretty much right away. It was like, had to be within the first month of us knowing each other. I texted her and I was like, hi, Cindy. And she said, hi, Cindy. And then we told about it and it stuck. It's so boring, I apologize. Yeah, it's not a good, there's no meaning or significance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But what's okay. not boring is you have a honorary Cindy who is very special and came to the Vale Dance Festival last year. Tell us about your honorary Cindy. Our honorary Cindy is Jennifer Garner, who has sort of just been an outspoken lover of ballet. And um, we just sort of hit it off and she's just generous and kind and talented. And I just adore her. She, yeah, she, so she took a photo of the two of us and then photoshopped herself into it and <laughs> was like, can I be a Cindy or something? I don't know. It was really cute. Yeah. It is so adorable. cute. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the Veil Dance Festival now. Um, could each of you do a brief explanation of what your fir- first experiences were at the festival, how you got invited and what that first year was like for you? Mm-hmm. I think I was invited. I think I literally ran into Damien on the subway and he was like (laughs) riding, you know, riding on the Upper West Side. And he was like, you should come to the Veil Dance Festival. And of course I was so excited because, you know, everyone wants to go to the Veil Dance Festival. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I had just, I was either, I think I was still in the core. Um, I was about to be promoted to soloist. Um, I've been going for many years and I was the artist in residence in 2017, maybe ish, 2018. What, what, did, what did that entail for you? What, what was your experience as artist in residence like? Um, I don't know, pretty similar to just being a dancer, um, maybe a few more 
uh, like spokesperson type events. Mm -hmm. Um, but I did get to do a lot of really cool debuts that year. I debuted an afternoon of a fawn. Um, yeah, I've been able to debut so many roles that I never would have been able to perform anywhere else. Um, like Mm -hmm. Theranod and, um, afternoon of a fawn, bitter earth. Mm -hmm. So I feel very lucky. It's always been like a highlight of my um, career and artistic development to go there. Oh. How about you? And then about you? I, I think I was, someone got injured and I was called, I believe. Um, I had just done Duo Concertante with ABT with Paloma and they knew I knew it. So, or they had seen me do it or something and they called me and they said, hey, come do this number with, with Tyler Peck. And I was like, yes, because naturally I'm, I had been waiting, you know, eons to be invited. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but yeah, like she said, everybody wants to go. It's a, it's a, it's an amazing mix of, of talent, and mm-hmm. uh, it's a beautiful place and all that jazz. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows it. Um, <laughs> and so I went and I did Duo Concertant, and that was my first experience, and it was unbelievably fun, and yeah, it was just an amazing experience. And so I've been going back every year since, and that was like 2013 or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bella, you um, talked about uh, doing Afternoon of a Fawn. Is there something else that the two of you maybe, um, excluding any new works, but any sort of um, repertoire that you have gotten to dance at Vail um, that you wouldn't have gotten to maybe dance at ABT that was especially nice for you to have the opportunity to do in Vail? Well, yeah, one of my dream roles, I mean, my favorite ballet is Serenade. I just think it's the most beautiful ballet ever. Um, And like, I don't know, it kind of doesn't really matter. Of course, there are incredible performers that really like can transcend and take it to another level. But Mm -hmm. like, it doesn't even matter who's performing it. It's such a beautiful work Mm -hmm. that it's just powerful and moving. Um, Like, at any viewing. <laughs> um, but anyways, I was really excited. I got to do the Russian girl. I think she's called the the one that does all the crazy jumping. Yeah, yeah. And oh my God, I was dying. It's at hard. Ireland too. Like dying. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was so fun. We yeah. saw you also, last year. It was so great. We loved it. Was it was great. It. Oh, and beautiful. I, I love too that um, it might not be, I think if, you know, other other leaders were casting you in it, it would be easy to stick you in either of the other two Mm -hmm. roles, the Waltz girl, who's sort of like the more pivotal character, if you will, or the Dark Angel, since you have those beautiful lines. But I love Damien and Heather. They really make this effort to put people, it's not even outside the box. It's just people, it's a lot of leaders can keep people in like a, you're this type, you're that type, Mm -hmm. but you have this beautiful jump. And so to combine the qualities that you're kind of always praised for with something that sometimes maybe doesn't get as much attention. I think it's just such smart casting and uh, leadership. Totally. Yeah. They have, they, I feel like they really defy like typecasting Mm -hmm. and um, really, I don't know, have the vision and foresight to put people into really like interesting roles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to do, Stars and Stripes this year, which would have been just silly and fun, and uh-huh. I, that really, that really makes oh, sense. You for would me. have been so great. You've never done it, right? No. How, yeah, you need to do that. Twenty twenty one. Who are you gonna dance with? I don't know. They didn't get that far. <laughs> I would have found out like four days before the show. <laughs> um, and I, I mean, one of my favorite things that is really outside of my comfort zone that I did was. Michelle Dorrance says one, two, three, four, five, six. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was tapping alongside Michelle. And I, I really haven't tapped since I was probably 16. Mm-hmm. So that was a real challenge and so fun for me. And Michelle's incredible. So, yeah. Yeah. So, what's that like bringing back a uh, sort of latent talent? Like, uh, and then with someone who is as, you know, Michelle is not just the top of her field, she is basically a genius you know so uh, so was that intimidating or you just dove back in and we're like okay i'm learning from the best so the thing is when like i'm a ballet dancer so i don't have to be a genius at tap dancing for people to enjoy it the novelty of me tapping is enjoyable in itself Mm -hmm. so i felt very forgiven for my faults in my (laughs) or 
in my lack of proficiency in mm-hmm. tap. Uh, so I was stressed because I really, really wanted to be good and not just like ruining the sound of the dance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I don't know, I felt, I felt the audience was supportive instead of judgmental, which right. I often feel in Vail. <laughs> how, much of, how much of a heads up did you get that you would be tapping that year? Like, were you working on it in New York before you even got to the festival or was it really just like a few days before you were on stage? Damien texted me the, the video from uh-huh. a couple of years ago when she had made it. And he was like, you're going to be doing this. You might want to take a look. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, are there certain ballets? We'll just put this out into the stratosphere so that, you know, maybe Damien and Heather will hear about it and we can make it a reality. Are there certain things that you guys would love to do at Vail that you haven't gotten to do at, at Ballet Theater, your home company? I've done step text and that mm-hmm. was really fun. Um, I don't know. I honestly, I'm trying to think. Probably just more, ooh, I know what I'd love to do. Um, I'd love to do like a black and white Balanchine leotard, mm-hmm. ballet, like some potted uh, one of those. Uh-huh. Oh, and also diamonds. I mm-hmm. feel like, like people would definitely cast me as rubies, mm-hmm. but I think I should do that. <laughs> <laughs> feel more like a diamond. <laughs> mm-hmm. like a diamond. <laughs> James, you did rubies a lot in, a lot. in Boston yeah. Ballet, but did you ever do diamonds? No, never. So maybe we get to see you guys in diamonds. Oh my God, let's. Yeah. Heather, <laughs> Diamonds 2021. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. It needs to happen. Um, let's also talk about, James, your Veil choreographic uh, debut, which um, you had last year with New American Romance. Um, Michael and I just love this piece so much. It was so, so beautiful. Um, tell us a little bit about what this experience was like creating this piece on your ABT colleagues last summer. It was it was an amazing experience, but it was condensed. Mm-hmm. So I finished the piece, I think, in five days. Yeah. And then we had one more week to rehearse it. And I mean, that's insane. It's mm-hmm. 20 minutes long. Yeah. And it's got a lot of dancing in it. Right. Um, and so I knew in order to rehearse it, I had to finish it really fast. Um, and I actually got really sick during the Met season last year. and missed out on like two days of of creating Mm -hmm. so i was so amped up and just like ready to spit out the ballet Mm -hmm. um and then i mean it's just i i really enjoyed making the dance with my friends Mm -hmm. honestly it was just such a pleasant experience and the audience at Vale was just awesome they were Mm -hmm. like so effusive and warm and lovely and uh it was just a really fun experience and then Two days later, I got a call from my boss, Kevin McKenzie, and he said, we're putting it on the fall season, and my head nearly exploded, um, just because it's such a dream. I mean, absurd to have to have your work presented at Lincoln Center. That's just outrageous and, and ungrateful. And I, and I was supposed to have another work at Vail this summer, and I, uh, I'm sad that it will have to be deferred, but until next time. And you already started kind of uh, mapping out what that might look like? Yeah, of course. You want to tell us about it or are we keeping it secret for 2021? (laughs) No, 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 I can tell you about it. So I had, um, like, my goal is to finish each movement of of Death and the Maiden, the Schubert masterpiece. Mm -hmm. Uh, There are six movements, I believe. And I actually have already done one of them with three ballerinas at ABT, Bella being one of them, Mm -hmm. um, that I worked on for ABT's incubator program, which eventually led to me getting the opportunity to create on ABT for Vail. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, So I, in my mind, I have this whole extra, extra, extra concept, uh, but I don't have the opportunities right now to finish it all at once. So I'm going to do step by step until it's all done. Right. So I was going to do one more movement for the Mm Vail Festival. Mm -hmm. You know, something that was really, I think, striking about your premiere last year was it, you could tell that you were pulling from a lot of different influences. Um, can we talk about what some of those were? What what things made it into the ballet for you? Oh, oh, absolutely. So, I mean, I wanted it to be a sort of nod to romantic classical ballets, mm-hmm. but with me, that's just not really possible because you're going to inevitably get my background in there. Mm-hmm. So it's... It's going to be jazzy, but it also looks 
very classical. I wanted it to really fool people into thinking it was like an incredibly classical piece until you see the movement and it's mm -hmm. acrobatic. And, you know, I pulled very much from my childhood with my dance teachers who had a touring, like world famous adagio act, which is like circus pas de deux, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so Catherine and Aaron, both ABT soloists, they had an insane pas de deux where she was just getting whipped about. Um, and then you even see influences like, you know, Britney Spears and Beyonce in there with the three women. Mm -hmm. it's, it's all, it's all part of the mix. Right. Yeah. Bella, let's talk a little bit about your experience last summer working with Justin Peck. You were a part of the star studded um, group of increases. That was so amazing. We had ABT principals, New York City Ballet, Boston Ballet all together. What was it like working with Justin for the first time in Vail last year? Yeah, well I, well, I love Justin's work. I'm like a, such a fan. I always can't wait to see like the new thing that he's made. Mm -hmm. um, but actually we had worked together. So we worked together on Red Sparrow. Um, That's right. Yeah, yes. which was really fun. Mm -hmm. And um, I also had done one of his pot at Bright Motion. Mm -hmm. um, I did that a couple years uh, before. So we'd worked together a bit. Um, Honestly, I found that experience like in the sneaker ballet to be like a little intimidating just because I have never done a sneaker ballet before. <laughs> and I felt also I was like with Tyler, who's like, she has almost like a photographic memory. Mm -hmm. She can pick things up. I mean, it's not normal. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't necessarily always consider myself to be like the quickest at picking things up. Like, um, but you know, we got there, but it was, it was really, really fun. It was really cool to try something new. Um, mm -hmm. But again, like that's just one of the challenges. And it's also the magic of Veil is putting something completely brand new in your body in like two weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I also just loved um, Devin Tusher was also part of that all-star cast. And the, see the two of you, oh, right. the it, increases. It increases. Right. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Increases is a masterpiece. It's yeah. such a great ballet. Oh and that's his first his first ballet that ever I love, went at City sorry, Ballet. I was so. talking about the premiere that we did, but right. yeah, increases. I was like, oh my god, this is my jam. It's such such a cool ballet. I told him that he needs to do a sequel called Decreases. Okay. And he laughed and never did it. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you should do decreases. yeah maybe yeah. decreases is uh the sister ballet but by white side <laughs> um but i i loved the way that you and devin um you know you were in this premiere and it's a short ballet it's i think it's like 12 minutes long or something mm -hmm. it's very short um and i just kept thinking like these are women who nightly have to do 32 fuetes after doing two previous acts and you were both like sweating bullets and like, I really want to do this so right. And like, what is, you know, how do I uh, execute this like stylistically uh, in, a, in a way that's true to Justin? And it was like the, the work ethic from both of you was just so bonkers. And it was so sort of disarming to see you like throw yourself into something that to my mind was like just a tiny fraction of what you have to do every single night at the Met, but you're just, true workhorses in that way yeah we were so nervous oh my god <laughs> we were like freaking out before the show <laughs> that's so funny and there was so only funny. one show so we gotta we gotta get it back I on know. the bail stage oh my god and we we was so it was so fun working with you on that too you were my my first <laughs> ever so I was, I was so lucky that so uh cool. i had someone that was not gonna um hate me for getting a count wrong here and there <laughs> but that was great uh. Very cool. Are there any Veil collaborations that you guys have been a part of that have gone on to have other lives outside of Veil that it maybe you've performed elsewhere? I mean, with people, yes. With um, people. It's about it themselves, but mm -hmm. I mean, we've gone on to work with the people we've met at Veil in various capacities, uh, mainly the, the dancers with City Ballet, with Michelle. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think my favorite thing about Vail, more than the dancing even, is the connection of, of all those people mm -hmm. across all disciplines of dance. We're just there to crush it. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about the 
bizarreness that is 2020 being a ballet dancer. I mean, it, it must be sort of a head trip to have to think forward and know that you are going to be back on stage, but when? And you guys have done a really sort of proactive thing via your social media accounts, and you're all, it seems like you're always taking class, and you're always trying to, you're giving class, and you're trying to find ways to keep things up keep the morale up. So mm -hmm. what was, um, what has your experience been like from the beginning to now in terms of how you're staying in shape and, and what you're trying to give back to the sort of following that both of you have? I, mean, I need to be really clear. There is nothing in the world that can put us in shape, like taking class and working all day, every day and performing. Mm -hmm. This is not the same thing. We are not staying in shape. We are, <laughs> completely out of shape at this point, even though we've done uh, the best job we can right. as far as like kitchen ballet, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, usually like at this time of year, we're finishing the Met season and we're like, we're like, yeah, everyone's mm -hmm. got like 18 abs and <laughs> <laughs> um, just like in the craziest shape of your life. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, honestly, it has been really hard staying motivated, but I feel like connecting with um, people via social media has mm -hmm. given me the motivation um, to where I feel like, I don't know, there's a purpose to taking class and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's hard. I mean, I've ever since I was like 15, I've always had a performance on the calendar. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's weird not having that. Mm -hmm. know. You know, one nice thing I think is like the directors that we've spoken to in this time all are very much on the same page. You know, I feel like as a dancer, maybe you'd worry that like, what is, what's the expectation going to be? You know, we talked to Miko Nissanen and he was just like, I think you just, we just have to know they're just going to be, you know, like a grading curve. It's just mm -hmm. like these first performances back aren't going to look that hot. <laughs> and yeah. we have to take care of the dancers and understand that like the uh, level may not be there, but not, not just that, but that, you know, your bodies need, are going to need that time to sort of readjust. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't know. At the same time, like, you know, we're alive, we're healthy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so. And in a lot of ways, we've had a really good time connecting with people and like, I don't know, it's felt really good to do class for charity. Mm -hmm. Tell, tell us about that. that. Tell us I about mean, the money that, that you're that raising. Was, that was sort of just a little byproduct. We were like, well, it would be cool if for our class, we just asked people to donate to mm -hmm. A charity a week mm -hmm. and it started out just like as a cute little idea but then I don't know it became sort of like the cornerstone of our class mm -hmm. like feel good about yourself and do some good mm -hmm. yeah the first class that we taught I think like 18,000 people tuned in wow um and we were like I mean we should really imagine if all of these people gave a little bit of money right um I mean I don't think everyone donates but I think there's been hopefully like a steady influx. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We I raised think. like eight grand for the, for the dancers emergency fund. Within that's like so eight days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like wow. it, that's felt so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But at the same time, I need applause. <laughs> <laughs> and I also think it's important for all of us to remember, like if we're growing artistically in other ways right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I think, like I've been, we've all been doing a ton of self-reflection and um, I think that's all gonna like pay off mm -hmm. when we do come back on stage. Now, what are some of the things that you've changed uh, or you know, you've been forced to adapt in this time um, that you think once things go back, let's say to, to normal, you're still gonna hold on to things that are, are positive changes that you can actually utilize in a quote unquote normal world. I don't know, I've sort of embraced my office worker persona. Mm -hmm. And I, I have time daily to set aside to connecting with people and doing emails and maintaining house. And that was something I sort of just let slide before. Mm -hmm. That's something I want to maintain when we go back to work in 2037. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think also just like with everything that's been going on, just becoming more and more aware of like racial inequality in the ballet world. Mm -hmm. um, and just like how, you know, 
we may be like passively participating in that and how we can like actively change that going forward. Absolutely. Yeah. It's so difficult to. Yeah. So I think it's good. I'm like, I'm just, I don't know. I'm trying to use this time. I think like the most important thing we can be doing right now is just like educating and mm -hmm. educating ourselves and like reflecting and standing mm -hmm. up. Yeah. And, and, standing you up. Know, at least we're in a really good position to be people who stand up. Mm -hmm. You know, we've, we've been in the business for a long time at this point mm -hmm. and it's up to people like us to really just be noisy and, and say the things that people are afraid to say. Right. And we've, we've all learned a lot about that during this time. Mm -hmm. and, so what are some of the ways that you've been using your platform to uh, stand up and, and speak out and um, not merely just sort of post on X number of followers, but actually engage them in positive ways? Yeah, well, I mean, for my whole career, I've been really noisy about about essentially gay rights. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm very, very out and proud, and I try to inspire young kids to not be ashamed of themselves or or change themselves to make other people feel more comfortable mm -hmm. and i think that that sort of mentality lends itself well to to promoting racial justice mm -hmm. and it feels very natural to me to um to tell people about my journey and how it how it can be like all tie in together. And I don't know. So I've just been sharing information. My boyfriend Milk is like the most insanely, like he's like a sponge for, for social information. Mm -hmm. So he, he teaches me a lot and I try to share the information that he shares. And when you have a, a platform like we do, you just have to get the information out. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. think it's, I can't make people read the, the pamphlets, but I sure can hand them out. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like it's great, like, to, I don't know, have these, like, I don't know, it's easy to, um, like, pick up tidbits of information and learn about new things via social media, but also it's important to remember that's just, like, the tip of the iceberg, and there's right. so much more, like, deep diving that needs to be done, mm -hmm. not on social media. Um, so yeah, for me, it's just been like educating yeah. and um, also just talking to like other people in the field. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And also like thinking back on my time as a dance student um, and just trying to assess like what I think wasn't good mm -hmm. about the way that I was brought up in ballet and um, like learning about other people's experiences. Right. 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 Yeah. Are there any, um, just to shift gears a little bit, are there any collaborations or anything that you guys have up coming up that you're working on? I know, of course, a time without the stage just presents all these, you know, difficulties, but is, are there ways that you're adapting and finding other projects to work on? I mean, we both have some cool projects in the works. Um, I actually, like, am the subject of a documentary that is being worked on right now um, with the director, John Avnet. He did fried green tomatoes. He was wow. there on Black Swan. He's mm -hmm. done, has a long um, history uh -huh. of directing and producing. So that's been like a fun thing to work on. I've got a lot of fun things going on. I like to make stuff. So I've got an album as my pop alter, like my pop musician alter ego coming mm -hmm. out uh -huh. on my birthday, which is July 27th. Um, it's called Bodega Bouquet and it'll be on like Apple Music and stuff, Spotify. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm writing a book that's going to be published by um, Penguin Viking. Wow. And uh, that'll be out August 2021. Mm -hmm. And I'm always making like videos and, and dances and just stuff. Mm -hmm. so. uh, I mean, you, you've been really prolific with your, your work as a musician. Um, can you tell us what is influencing this album and um, what might, might make it a little bit different from what we've heard from you in the past? Absolutely. So there are sort of three sections of, of the album. It's called Bodega Bouquet. And mm -hmm. the title track I actually wrote as a, a would-be breakup song for me and Dan, aka Milk. Um, we've been together for over 13 years and I've been deprived of a breakup song. So I <laughs> sociopathically wrote a breakup song, mm -hmm. which is sort of sad and psycho and speaks to me. Um, <laughs> and then other bits to the album, there's 
a lot of comedy, a lot of like social poking fun. It's very, very sexually explicit. Um, I don't want to censor myself. And so I didn't. So some of the songs might be really jarring, but, um, but I think they're pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause that's not something you hear all the time uh, from, from a gay singer, rapper, mm -hmm. extraordinaire, not mm -hmm. so extraordinaire. Um, yeah. Uh, that makes me think of like, you know, Taylor Swift is obviously pretty well known known for her breakup songs but then she had some point where she like either wasn't in a relationship or hadn't been broken up with in a while mm. and she was like this is the first song I had to write just like as a sort of fantasy yeah so, so I'm making, I mean Swifty moment it's not not real you know what I mean it's I say real things about mm. a thing that hasn't happened you know what I mean <laughs> and once yeah. you hear it you'll know and I have like people on it like a lot of ABTs pianists are on it and mm -hmm. I have like a friend from Boston Ballet who's on it it's just like a fun mix of people collaborators mm -hmm. very fun well just before we let you guys go uh, we just want to circle back to Vail Dance Festival uh, their digital um, edition this year so what are you guys hoping that audiences who maybe have never been to the Vail Dance Festival before will take away from this experience and from seeing what what we create all together in Vail I mean like I said before, I think the people make up the, the really magnificent part of the dance festival. And these people just happen to be the best dancers in the world. So mm -hmm. it's, it's just a whole lot of good. And I really hope that anybody interested in, in this, you know, video interview thing uh, will make sure that they get to the Vail Dance Festival next summer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Honestly, like just Heather and Damien believing in me and giving me these incredible opportunities. I feel that they've had like a real hand in my artistic development. And um, so I don't know. Yeah, I really miss, I'm going to miss this year working with them. Mm -hmm. um, but I can't wait to like dive in and keep growing and uh, exploring um, next year. And next year, everyone will come out to see the uh, Boylston Whiteside Diamonds. You know? Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's really correct. <laughs> Before we're 57. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much for joining us. And, thank um, you so much. Thank you. It was, it's always a pleasure chatting with you both. <laughs>